Hello, and welcome to another one of our TAC tutorial sessions. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about 3ds Max and the V-Ray plugin, and how to install the AXF plugin to allow you to load in AXFs directly into the V-Ray inside of 3ds Max. But before we jump into that, let's go over exactly what the TAC or the Total Appearance Capture system is. Here at X-Rite, we deal with a lot with color, and and the TAC deals a lot with materials. So materials that we want to bring from the physical into the digital realm have to do with a lot more than just color. And we'll go into exactly what all that includes. Because appearance is, like I said, more than just color and it's more than just a simple picture. But it's the visual sensation through which an object is perceived to have attributes such as color, texture, gloss, transparency, translucency, and more. So a material is a lot more than just just taking a picture and bringing it into your computer. The TAC7 scanner does all of that and breaks it down into the different maps that you are going to use in order to have full control over your digital material. So one of the big things that the TAC7 does exceedingly well is the high level of accuracy that it has. Now you could go on your computer and create a version of your material, but it would not be as hyper accurate as a scanner would. And now a regular texture scanner doesn't get all of the different types of maps and whatnot brought in that the TAC7 and the AXF file system is able to create. This is because the TAC7 has a structured light projector, four industrial grade cameras, 32 white LED point light sources, eight spectral filter wheels, and variable linear light scanner. So all of that is able to capture the photos and the data and the different maps that your material has and digitizes it. So the AXF is what houses all of this information and it is able to create all of these maps that your material has as well as storing important information and metadata. In a scanned material you're going to have multiple maps that you're going to have. You're going to have your diffuse, height, normals, roughness, and specular just to name a few and different materials are going to have different types of maps. And what's great about the TAC is it's able to capture these different types of maps and allow you a high level of accuracy from that. So for instance, in this coated leather, you actually have two different types of normals that you're going to be looking at. You have your clear coat normal that gives off the shine and reflectivity, but you also have your leather texture that's going to have its own normals. And something else that we have now that will be super useful for not only you, but clients that you may have, as you're using the AXFs in your workflow, this Pantora viewer will be great to be able to view your different AXFs, to be able to see them on different types of objects that you want to load in via OBJ, and different lighting scenes from HDR images that you can load in as well. Now this is a free resource that will be available as well that you can see and grab from the link in the description below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into Pantora to get a look at what we're dealing with. So first thing you're gonna notice in Pantora to start something, you're gonna wanna start your job. And once you have your material loaded in, you're gonna be able to go through and set the parameters in which you're gonna measure and post-process your material. Now we've been working with this blue diamond vinyl material for a while and we're going to continue to use that and showcase it. But as you can see, based on the type of material that it is, we know that it's a textile. It's going to have a displacement map, so we want to include that. It is anisotropic, so we're going to want to include that as well. It has medium gloss, so we can choose that. It does not have transparencies. And the model that we're going to base it off of is the GGX base. And it also has a uniform Fresnel. So from that, we're going to go ahead and go into next. We can pre-scan the material. This isn't the material that um, we're using, but you pre-scan the material so that way you can get a region of interest that you want and are interested in. And then from there, you're able to start it and it will begin to process and measure the material. Once it's done measuring, it will drop down into the post-processing where your computer will then pick up the slack and post-process all of the pictures and all of the data that the TAC7 created. From there, you're going to be able to go ahead and edit the material that you had, so that way you're going to be able to get rid of any um, gradients and be able to achieve a tileable and smooth material, such as this. So you're able to bring in cropping, you're able to do different types of 
uh, min cuts and linear blends to be able to bring your material into that seamlessness. And then once you save that out, you're able to load in, this is very similar to the, to the Pantora viewer, and you're able to then bring your material into this object into 3D, into 3D space to be able to visually see what it looks like in, in 3D space. And so with that, we can go ahead and jump into, once we have our material created, what then we do with that and bringing it into 3ds Max. So first thing that you're going to need to have, obviously, is a copy of 3ds Max and V-Ray. Once you have those installed and ready to go, then the easiest way to get access to it, to our AXF plugin, is going to... To Google and just searching AXF V-Ray plugin. We will also include another link in the description below to straight to this page that has the download. But you're going to go ahead and click on AXF plugins for V-Ray and this will open up this page right here. So you can go ahead and download that. Then in your downloads you can go ahead and open the program in which case you just follow the installer steps and it will install it. The great thing about this installer is that it will automatically figure out what versions of V-Ray, Max, or Maya that you have and install it correctly. It's all automated so there's nothing you have to worry about. I already have it installed so we'll go ahead and finish that up. And let's go ahead and jump into 3ds Max. Now I have a very simple scene set up with a simple V-Ray light, a ground plane, and some objects. Just so that way we can get a look at what we're looking at here. So when you have opened up the material editor, and we're gonna go ahead and click on a unused material. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and when you open up the map browser, we're gonna go ahead and go under materials and under V-Ray, we're gonna find the AXF material. Str simple and straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And from that point, you're gonna see that the material that I had, I had it applied to the teapot and to this donut shape here. If it was, it obviously has updated because that's what the material I have set for. So we're gonna go ahead and find our material here. So we're gonna go ahead and load in our tutorial blue diamond vinyl .axf. So this is just the AXF file that we've been dealing with. And we're gonna go ahead and click and load on it. So as you can see there, it has been loaded in. I have, um, as you can see, it didn't update anything in the viewport um, other than make it a slightly different shade of gray. In the viewport, it's going to be a gray until you render it, then you will actually see the material that you have. So I did some playing around with it so that way I could get the tile correct, and I know I need to do about 150. So in here, we'll go ahead and go 150 like so. And like that, we can go ahead and save this out. And if we were to bring up, I did a quick render of what our materials were before. So as you can see, just a simple gray teapot and gray donut shape there. These are some other AXF files that I loaded in, just so that way you can see some of the differentiation. But that's what it was. And we'll go ahead and bring open our render setup. And you're obviously going to want your render to be the V-Ray next. So that way it's actually capitalizing on the V-Ray plugin. So we'll go ahead and hit render. And this will render out. And as you can see, we have our blue vinyl diamond pattern there on the teapot as well. As you'll see in a second, the donut shape as well. So really simple, really straightforward. The other thing to note while this is continuing rendering, I'll go ahead and open up. Pantora again, you can go through and export all of the uh, textures that you made. So you can go ahead and save them out like this. So that way it will actually save out all of the individual maps that you created. So you'll have your diffuse, your normal, your specular, your roughness, your anisotropic, and your height map all separated out into their individual files and you can save them out as a PNG, an EXR, or a TIFF file. And we have a we have a Python script that then allows you to load those in manual or automatically into 3ds Max so that way it will 
do what we just did here by loading in the AXF, but it will drag in all of your different maps and drop them into the corresponding spots to be able to also create this texture. But we have the AXF and we loaded it in. And as you can see, we have our material. You can see in this material, just wanted to highlight a couple different things. This material has a little bit of reflectivity in the blue. It has kind of this blue metallic. Um, so you can see up in here, we have some reflectivity that is brought in as well. So that's all inside of the AXF. The other thing to note that you're going to want to make sure of is when you are dealing with scaling and we do work in real world scale based on millimeters, as you can see right here, we can go ahead and save out this image if I wanted to, um, to show off to all my friends and family of how sweet I have created this material and have been able to bring it into an actual 3D space. And there you have it. Now you've learned how to not only understand what a AXF is, how to use it in Pantora, but also bring in your AXF into 3ds Max using a V-Ray plugin and the AXF plugin to be able to seamlessly bring your AXF into 3ds Max as a material and put it right on your objects.